This is Ujjwal Kashyap and I welcome you at I Desire UPSC. Hello everyone. Today we are going to start the 10th chapter of our book India's Struggle for Independence by Bipin Chandra. The Swadeshi Movement 1903 to 1908 With the start of Swadeshi Movement at the turn of the century the indian national movement took a major leap forward women students and large section of the urban and rural population of bengal and other parts of india became actively involved in politics for the first time the next half a decade saw the emergence of almost all the major political trends of the indian national movement from conservative moderation to political extremism from terrorism to incipient socialism from petitioning and public speeches to passive resistance and boycott all had their origins in the movement the richness of the movement was not confined to politics alone the period saw a breakthrough in indian art literature music science and industry indian society as a whole was experimenting and the creativity of the people expanded in every direction the swadeshi movement has its genesis in the anti partition movement which was started to oppose the british decision to partition bengal there was no questioning the fact that bengal with a population of 78 millions about a quarter of the population of british india had indeed become administratively unwieldy the meaning of unwieldy is of an object difficult to move because of its size shape or weight equally there was no escaping the fact that the real motive for partitioning bengal was political indian nationalism was gaining in strength and partition expected to weaken what was perceived as the nerve center of indian nationalism at that time the attempt in the words of lord curzon the viceroy 1899 to 1905 was to dethrone calcutta from its position as the center from which the congress party is manipulated throughout bengal and indeed the whole of india the center of successful intrigue and divide the bengali speaking population the meaning of intrigue is arouse the curiosity or interest of fascinate resley the home secretary to government of india was more blunt he said on 6 december 1904 bengal united is power bengal divided will pull several different ways that is what the congress leaders feel their apprehensions are perfectly correct and they form one of the great merits of the scheme in this scheme one of our main objects is to split up and thereby weaken a solid body of opponent to our rule cousin reacted sharply to the almost instant furor that was raised in bengal over the partition proposals and wrote to the secretary of state the meaning of furor is an outbreak of public anger or excitement 
if we are weak enough to yield to their clamor now we shall not be able to dismember or reduce bengal again and you will be cementing and solidifying a force already formidable and certain to be a source of increasing trouble in the future the meaning of clamor is a loud and confused noise especially that of people shouting the meaning of dismember is cut off the limbs of the partition of the state intended to curb bengali influence by not only placing bengalis under two administrations but by reducing them to a minority in bengal itself as in the new proposal bengal proper was to have 17 million bengali and 37 million odia and hindi speaking people also the partition was meant to foster another kind of division this time on the basis of religion the policy of propping up muslim muslim communalists as a counter to the congress and the national movement which was getting increasingly crystallized in the last quarter of the 19th century was to be implemented once again cousin's speech at dakka betrayed his attempt to woo the muslims to support partition with partition he argued dakka could become the capital of new muslim majority province with 18 million muslims and 12 million hindus which would invest the muhammadans in eastern bengal with a unity which they have not enjoyed since the days of the old muslim viceroys and kings the muslims would thus get a better deal and the eastern districts would be freed of pernicious influence of calcutta the meaning of pernicious is having a harmful effect and even lord minto cousin's successor who was critical of the way in which partition was imposed disregarding public opinion saw that it was good political strategy minto argued that from a political point of view alone putting aside the administrative difficulties of the old province i believe partition to have been very necessary the indian nationalists clearly saw the design behind the partition and condemned it unanimously the anti partition and swadeshi movement had begun in december 1903 the partition proposals became publicly known an immediate and spontaneous protest followed the strength of the protest can be caused from the fact that in the first two months following the announcement 500 protest meetings were held in east bengal alone especially in dhaka mimi singh and chitgong nearly 50000 copies of pamphlets giving a detailed critique of the partition proposals were distributed all over bengal surendranath banaji krishna kumar mitra prithvish charan ray and other leaders launched a powerful press campaign against the partition proposals through journals and newspapers like the bengali hitabadi and sanjeevni vast protest meetings were held in the town hall of calcutta in march 1904 and january 1905 and numerous petitions 69 memoranda from the dakka division alone some of them signed by as many as 70000 people a very large number 
keeping in view the level of politicization in those days were sent to the government of india and the secretary of state even the big zamindars who had hitherto been loyal to the raj joined forces with the congress leaders who were mostly intellectuals and political workers drawn from journalism law and other liberal professions this was the phase 1903 to mid 1905 when moderate techniques of petitions memoranda speeches public meetings and press campaigns held full sway the objective was to turn to public opinion in india and england against the partition proposals by preparing a full proof case against them the hope was that this would yield sufficient pressure to prevent this injustice from occurring the government of india however remained unmoved despite the widespread protest voiced against the partition proposals the decision to partition bengal was announced on 19th july 1905 it was obvious to the nationalists that their moderate methods were not working and that a different kind of strategy was needed within days of the government announcement numerous spontaneous protest meetings were held in mufassil towns such as dinaspur pabna faridpur tangal jesor takka birbhum and barisal it was in these meetings that the pleas to boycott foreign goods was first taken in calcutta students organized a number of meetings against partition and for swadeshi the formal proclamation of the swadeshi movement was made on the 7 august 1905 in a meeting held in the calcutta town hall the movement hitherto sporadic and spontaneous now had a focus and a leadership that was coming together at the 7 august meeting the famous boycott resolution was passed even moderate leaders like surendra nath banerji toured the country urging the boycott of manchester cloth and liverpool salt on september 1 the government announced that partition was to be effected on 16th october 1905 the following weeks saw protest meetings being held almost every day all over bengal some of these meetings like the one in barisal drew crowds of 10 to 12 thousands that the masses of boycott went home is evident from the fact that the value of british cloth sold in some of the mufassil district fell by 5 to 15 times between september 1904 and september 1905 the day partition took effect 16 october 1905 was declared a day of mourning throughout bengal people fasted and no fires were lit at the cooking hearth in calcutta a hartal was declared people took out processions and band after band walked barefoot bathed in ganges in the morning and then paraded the streets singing bande matram which almost spontaneously became the theme song of the movement people tied rakhis on each other's hand as a symbol of the unity of the two halves of bengal later in the day anand mohan bose and surendra nath banerji addressed two huge mass meetings which drew crowds of 50000 to 75000 people these were perhaps the largest mass meetings ever to be held under the nationalist banner this far within a few hours of the meeting a sum of rupees 50000 was raised for the movement it was 
apparent that the character of the movement in terms of both its goals and social base had begun to expand rapidly as abdul rasul president of barisal conference april 1906 put it what we could not have accomplished in 50 or 100 years the great disaster the partition of bengal has done for us in 6 months its fruits have been the great national movement known as the swadeshi movement the masses of swadeshi and the boycott of foreign goods soon spread to the rest of country lokmanya tilak took the movement to different parts of india especially pune and bombay ajit singh and lala lajpat rai spread the swadeshi masses in punjab and other parts of northern india sayed haider raza led the movement in delhi rawalpindi kangra jammu multan and haridwar witnessed active participation in the swadeshi movement chitambaram pillai took the movement to the madras presidency which was also galvanized by bipin chandra paul's extensive lecture tours the indian national congress took up the the swadeshi call and the banaras session 1905 presided over by g k gokhale supported the swadeshi and boycott movement for bengal the militant nationalists led by tilak bipin chandra paul lajpat roy and arvind ghosh were however in favor of extending the movement to the rest of india and carrying it and carrying it beyond the program of just swadeshi and boycott to a full fledged political mass struggle the aim was now swaraj and the abrogation of partition had become the pettiest and narrowest of all political objects the moderates by and large were not as yet willing to go that far in 1906 however the indian national congress at its calcutta session presided over by dada bhai narozi took a major step forward narozi in his presidential address declared that the goal of the indian national congress was self government or swaraj like that of united kingdom or the colonies the differences between the moderates and the extremists especially regarding the pace of the movement and the techniques of struggle to be adopted came to a head in the 1907 surat session of congress where the party split with serious consequences for the swadeshi movement in bengal however after 1905 the extremists acquired dominant influence over the swadeshi movement several new forms of mobilization and techniques of struggle now began to emerge at the popular level the trend of mendicancy petitioning and memorials was on the retreat the militant nationalists put forward several fresh ideas at the theoretical propagandistic and programmatic plane political independence was to be achieved by converting the movement into a mass movement through the extension of boycott into a full scale movement of non cooperation and passive resistance the teaching of extended boycott was to include apart from boycott of foreign goods boycott of government schools and colleges codes titles and government services and even the organization of strikes the aim was to make the administration under present condition impossible by an organized refusal to do anything which shall help either the british commerce in the exploitation of the country or british officialdom in the administration of it while some with remarkable foresight saw the tremendous potential of large scale peaceful resistance if 
द चौकीदार द कॉन्स्टेबल द डिप्टी एंड द मुंसिफ एंड द क्लर्क नॉट टू स्पीक ऑफ द सिपॉय ऑल रिजाइन देयर रिस्पेक्टिव फंक्शन फिरंगी रूल इन द कंट्री मे कम टू एन एंड इन अ मोमेंट नो पावर एंड शॉर्ट विल बी नीडेड नो सिपॉयज विल हैव टू बी ट्रेंड अदर्स लाइक और विंदो गोस विद द ग्रोइंग लिंक विथ रिवोल्यूशनरी टेरिस्ट केप्ट ओपन द ऑप्शन ऑफ वायलेंट रेसिस्टेंस इफ ब्रिटिश रिप्रेशन वॉज स्टेप्ड अप अमॉन्ग द सेवरल फॉर्म्स ऑफ स्ट्रगल थ्रोन अप बाय द मूवमेंट इट वॉज द बॉयकॉट ऑफ फॉरन गुड्स विच मेट विथ द ग्रेटेस्ट विजिबल सक्सेस एट द प्रैक्टिकल एंड पॉपुलर लेवल boycott and public burning of foreign cloths picking of shops selling foreign goods all became common in remote corners of bengal as well as in many important towns and cities throughout the country women refused to wear foreign bangles and use foreign utensils washermen refused to wash foreign cloths and even priests declined offering which contained foreign sugar the movement also innovated with considerable success different forms of mass mobilization public meetings and processions emerged as major method of mass mobilization and simultaneously as form of popular expression numerous meetings and processions organized at the district taluka and village level in cities and towns both testified to the depth of swadeshi sentiment and and acted as vehicles for its further spread these forms were to retain their preeminence in later phases of the national movement corps of volunteers or samitis as they were called were another major form of mass mobilization widely used by the swadeshi movement the swadesh bandhan samiti set up by ashwini kumar dat a school teacher in barisal was the most well known volunteer organization of them all through the activities of this samiti whose 159 branches reached out to the remotest corner of the district that was able to generate an unparalleled mass following among the predominantly muslim peasantry of the region the samitis took the swadeshi masses to the village through magic lalteens lectures and swadeshi songs gave physical and moral training to their members did social work during famines and epidemics organized schools training in swadeshi craft and arbitration courts by august 1906 the barisal samiti reportedly settled 523 disputes through 89 arbitration committees though the samitis struck their deepest root in barisal they had expanded to other parts of bengal as well british official dom was genuinely alarmed by their activities their growing popularity with the ruler masses the swadeshi period also saw the creative use of traditional popular festivals and melas as a means of reaching out to the masses the ganpati and shivaji festival popularized by tilak became a medium for swadeshi propaganda not only in western india but also in bengal traditional folk theater forms such as jatras were extensively used in disseminating the swadeshi masses in an intelligible form to vast sections of the people 
many of whom were being introduced to modern politics ideas for the first time. Another important aspect of the Swadeshi movement was the great emphasis given to self-reliance or Atmasakti as a necessary part of the struggle against the government. Self-reliance in various fields meant the reasserting of national dignity, honor and confidence, further self-help and constructive work at the village level was envisaged as a means of bringing about the social and economic regeneration of the villages and of reaching the ruler masses. The meaning of envisaged is contemplate or conceive of as a possibility or a desirable future event. In actual terms, this meant social reform and campaigns against evils such as caste operation, early marriage, the dowry system, consumption of alcohol, etc. One of the major planks of the program of self-reliance was Swadeshi or national education, taking a cue from Tagore's Santi Niketan, the Bengal National College was founded with Aurobindo as the principal. Scores of national schools sprang up all over the country within a short period. In August 1906, the National Council of Education was established. The council consisting of virtually all the distinguished persons of the country at the time defined its objectives in this way to organize a system of education literacy, scientific and technical, on national lines and under national control, from the primary to the university level. The chief medium of instruction was to be the vernacular to enable the widest possible reach. For technical education, the Bengal Technical Institute was set up and Funds were raised to send students to Japan for advanced learning. Self-reliance also meant an effort to set up Swadeshi or indigenous enterprises. The period saw a mushrooming of Swadeshi textile mills, soap and match factories, tanneries, banks, insurance companies, shops, etc. While many of these enterprises whose promoters were more endowed with patriotic zeal than with business acumen were unable to survive for long. Some others such as Achare PC Ray's Bengal Chemical Factory became successful and famous. It was perhaps in cultural sphere that the impact of the Swadeshi movement was most marked. The songs composed at that time by Rabindranath Tagore, Rajni Kant Sain, Dvijendralal Ray, Mukund Das, Sayyid Abu Muhammad and others later became the moving spread for nationalists of all hues, terrorist, Gandhian or communist and are still popular. Rabindranath's Amar Sonar Bangla, written at that time, was to later inspire the liberation struggle of Bangladesh and was adopted as the national anthem of the country in 1971. The Swadeshi influence could be seen in Bengali folk music popular among Hindu and Muslim villages. Paligit and Jarigan, and it evoked collections of Indian fairy tales such as Thakurmar Juli, Grandmother's Tale, written by Dakshina Ranjan Mitra Majumdar, which delights 
Bengali children to this day. In art, this was the period when Abhinindranath Tagore broke the domination of Victorian naturalism over Indian art and shout inspiration from the rich indigenous tradition of Mughal, Rajput and Ajanta paintings. Nandalal Bose, who left a major imprint on Indian art, was the first recipient of a scholarship offered by the Indian Society of Oriental Art founded in 1907. In science, Jagdish Chandra Bose, Praful Chandra Ray and others pioneered original research that was praised the world over. In sum, the Swadeshi movement with its multifaceted program and activity was able to draw for the first time large sections of society into active participation in modern nationalist politics and still larger sections into the ambit of modern political ideas. The social base of the national movement was now extended to include a certain Jamindari section, the lower middle class in the cities and small towns and schools and college students on a massive scale. Women came out of their homes for the first time and joined processions and picketing. This period saw again for the first time an attempt being made to give a political direction to the economic grievances of the working class. Efforts were made by Swadeshi leaders, some of whom were influenced by international socialist currents such as those in Germany and Russia to organize strikes in foreign managed concerns such as the Eastern Indian Railway and Clive Jute Mills, etc. While it is argued that the movement was unable to make much headway in mobilizing the peasantry, especially its lower rungs, except in certain areas such as the district of Barisal, there can be no gainsaying the fact that even if the movement was able to mobilize the peasantry only in a limited area, that alone would count for a lot. This is so because the peasant participation in the Swadeshi movement marked the very beginning of modern mass politics in India. After all, even in latter post-Swadeshi movements, intense political mobilization and activity among the peasantry largely remained concentrated in specific pockets. Also, why? It is true that during the Swadeshi phase, the peasantry was not organized around peasant demands and that the peasants in most parts did not actively join in pertain form of struggle such as boycott or passive resistance. Large sections of the peasants through meetings, jatras, constructive works and so on were exposed for the first time to modern nationalist ideas and politics. The main drawback of Swadeshi movement was that it was not able to garner the support of the mass of Muslims and especially of the Muslim peasantry. The British policy of consciously attempting to use communalism to turn the Muslims against the Swadeshi movement was to a large extent responsible for this. The government was helped in its designs by the peculiar situation obtaining in large parts of Bengal, where Hindus and Muslims were divided along class lines, with the former being the landlord and the latter constituting the peasantry. This was the period when the All India Muslim League was set up with the active guidance and support of the government. More specifically, in Bengal, people like Nawab Salimullah of Dhaka were propped up 
as centers of opposition to the swadeshi movement mullah and malvis were pressed into service and unsurprisingly at the height of the swadeshi movement communal rights broke out in bengal given this background some of the forms of mobilization adopted by the swadeshi movement had certain unintended negative consequences the use of traditional popular customs festivals and institutions for mobilizing the masses a technique used widely in most part of the world to generate mass movements especially in the initial stages was misinterpreted and distorted by communalists backed by the state the communal forces saw narrow religious identities in the traditional forms utilized by the swadeshi movements whereas in fact these forms generally reflected common popular cultural traditions which had evolved as a synthesis of different religious practices prevalent among the people by mid 1908 the open movement with its popular mass character had all but spent itself this was due to several reasons first the government seeing the revolutionary potential of the movement came down with a heavy hand repression took the form of controls and bans on public meetings processions and the press student participants were expelled from government schools and colleges debarred from government service fined and at time beaten up by the police the case of the 1906 barisal conference where the police forcibly dispersed the conference and brutally beat up a large number of the participants is a telling example of the government's attitude and policy second the internal squabbles and especially the split in 1907 in congress the apex all india organization weakened the movement also the swadeshi movement had spread outside bengal the rest of the country was not as yet fully prepared to adopt the new style and stage of politics both these factors strengthened the hands of the government between 1907 and 1908 nine major leaders in bengal including ashwini kumar dat and krishn kumar mitra were deported tilak was given a sentence of 6 years imprisonment ajit singh and lajpat rai of punjab were deported and chitambaram pillai and hari sarvottam rao from madras and andhra were arrested Bipin Chandra Paul and Arbindo Ghosh retired from active politics a decision not unconnected with the repressive measures of the government almost with one stroke the entire movement was rendered leaderless third the swadeshi movement lacked an effective organization and party structure the movement had thrown up programmatically almost the entire gamut of gandhian techniques such as passive resistance non violent non cooperation the call to fill the british jails social reform constructive work etc the meaning of gamut is the complete range or scope of something it was however unable to give these techniques a centralized disciplined focus carry the bulk of political india and convert these techniques into actual practical political practice as gandhi ji was able to do later lastly the movement declined partially because of the very logic of mass movement itself 
they cannot be sustained endlessly at the same pitch of militancy and self sacrifice especially when faced with severe repression but need to pause to consolidate its forces for yet another struggle however the decline of the open movement by mid 1908 engendered yet another trend in the swadeshi phase that is the rise of revolutionary terrorism the youth of the country who had been part of the mass movement now found themselves unable to disappear tamely into the background once the movement itself grew moribund and government repression was stepped up frustrated some among them opted for individual heroism as distinct from the earlier attempts at mass action with the subsiding of the mass movement one era in indian freedom struggle was over it would be wrong however to see the swadeshi movement as a failure the movement made a major contribution in taking the idea of nationalism in a truly creative fashion to many sections of the people he thought untouched by it by doing so it further eroded the hegemony of colonial ideas and institutions so the desi influence in the realm of culture and ideas was crucial in this regard and has remained unparalleled in indian history except perhaps for the cultural upsurge of 1930s this time under the influence of the left further the movement evolved several new methods and techniques of mass mobilization and mass action though it was not able to put them all into practice successfully just as the moderates achievement in the realm of developing an economic critic of colonialism is not minimized by the fact that they could not themselves carry this critic to large masses of people similarly the achievement of the extremists and the swadeshi movement in evolving new methods of mass mobilization and action is not diminished by the fact that they could not themselves fully utilize these methods the legacy they bequeathed was one on which the latter national movement was to draw heavily the meaning of bequeathed is leave to a person or other beneficiary by a will the swadeshi movement was only the first round in the national popular struggle against colonialism it was to borrow the imagery used by antonio gramsci an important battle in the long drawn out and complex war of position for indian independence if you want to support us in our efforts kindly subscribe to our channel like it and share it so that others too gets its benefit happy learning thank you jai hind jai bharat